Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is lecture number 24 in a continuing series of lectures. Today's topic is The World of Dreams and subtitle Astral Projection. My host today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. How are you, Jim? Thank you, Rick. Thank you again to you and to our audience. It's a great honor again to be here. The world of dreams or astral projection. The scientific community has a very uh, clear understanding of it, but unfortunately, they don't agree with the so-called astral projection because unfortunately, our scientific community has become too much three-dimensional in their perception of reality. And Sincerely, this is a tragedy, a scientific tragedy, because the universe is not three-dimensional. You know, Albert Einstein discovered the fourth dimension scientifically. He proved that. Russian scientists, a hundred years ago, they developed a camera, the Kirillian camera, and with that, they were able to perceive the fourth dimension, and also they took pictures of an invisible organism that we all have is another body called the etheric body, the vital body, because that body gives vitality to the cellular body, to the physical body. But on the other side, you know, that's a real body. And the scientific community, for many reasons, mysterious reasons, either they have forgotten about it or there is a cover up that we don't understand because the world needs to know more about this, including their own scientific community. So what about NASA? NASA also speaks about parallel universes, parallel dimensions. They call it the hyperspace. They discovered that based on Albert Einstein, you know, discoveries, scientific, you know, evidence about it. And So the time has come now then to look at life from a different angle, from a a more expanded perception of reality. So we had a lecture about it, the parallel universes, the parallel dimensions, and the bodies, the different bodies, because we have more than a physical, more than our physical body. So many esoteric groups, all schools of esoteric science, like the Theosophical Society, and also in our own studies of Gnostic anthropology, Gnostic cosmology. We speak about that it's a fourth dimension, a fifth dimension, a sixth and even a seventh dimension. We're going to be talking now about the fifth dimension. The fifth dimension is connected with the molecular dimension, a molecular parallel universe, and also the atomic universe. They are both part of the fifth dimension. So our own molecules in reality live in a parallel universe, in a parallel dimension. This dimension is called the astral, the astral dimension, and is connected with the emotions. So we do have an astral body, and the astral body is a molecular body, and it is also connected with our emotional intelligence. And our scientists who believe they are experts in emotional intelligence, most of them ignore that this emotional intelligence is coming basically from this astral or emotional body or molecular body that we all have it, but we are not even aware of it. So to remember what we said before, in reality, we do have seven bodies. Our spirit is body number one. We could say our real being made of pure light. We have a second body, we could call it a divine soul, also made of light. We have a human soul made of electrons or fire, electricity. We have a mind, and the mind is a body, it's not the brain. We said it before. So the mind is made of atomic particles. This is all what it it is. There are no cells, no molecules in our mind. You know, the brain, don't confuse the mind with the brain. We are going to repeat that a million times 
until we establish the difference. We have number five, we have an astral body, an emotional body or molecular body. We have, as I mentioned before, the aesthetic body discovered by the Russians through the Kirlian camera. That aesthetic body is made of ether, which is also connected with the electromagnetic field of the Earth. And we enter already into the fourth dimension discovered by Albert Einstein through television, radio, cell phones, internet, etc., etc. We are already there into the fourth dimension. Today, we see a lot of, in the news, we see in the news that also during war times, and even the police departments of so many countries, they use today special lenses to see at night. And you can see the enemy or a police uh, team, you know, is approaching a home where there is a reunion, a gathering of criminal criminals, and they can see through the wall. You cannot see as, you know, as uh, they are just there. The capability of being able to see through a wall is really incredible. So we have entered already into the fourth dimension. We perceive the vibrations, the electronic vibrations of our own organisms. And finally, number seven is the physical or cellular body made of cells. So we all live within different parallel universes, different parallel dimensions, and we are not even aware of it. So before we were born, where were we? You know, physically, we could say, physically, we were within our physical father. You know, we were a sperm, physically talking. That sperm provided us, you see, our physical body in conjunction with a cell emanating from the physical body of our physical mother. That's the way our physical body was provided to us. But this is from a, a physical perception of reality. What about, you know, were we really somewhere in the universe before we were born, other than the sperm and the oval of our physical mother? Yes, the answer is yes. We were in the astral or molecular universe with an astral body. So we could say that's the world of the dead people, but it's also the world of dreams, part of the universe of dreams, because the astral dimension or the fifth dimension, the molecular universe, is everywhere in the universe, everywhere within the galaxy, everywhere within every planet, and everywhere in, within our own planet Earth, a molecular universe. So we were there in this fifth dimension with a molecular body. Why, why is it that we don't remember it? The answer is because we are not conscious about reality. We are subconscious, unconscious, infraconscious. In a few words, we're sleeping 24 hours a day. We're sleeping, snoring, and dreaming 24 hours a day. We don't perceive reality the way it is. In our modern world, you know, everybody's talking about, oh, follow your dreams, you know, don't give up, have a dream. In Gnostic anthropology, Gnostic psychology, Gnostic philosophy, we disagree with it. We disagree. Because what's more important, a dream or reality itself? Success. And dreams are totally different things. A dream is an aspiration, but it's not, you know, it's not the fulfillment of, a, of a, an aspiration. So we should stop dreaming and we should concentrate more in awakening our consciousness. When we awaken our consciousness, we'll be able to see the universe reality the way it is. We will be able to see our astral body you know, and in the astral universe, the astral parallel dimension, there time, as Albert Einstein discovered that, time is relative. But you know, there in the astral, past, present, and future become one. This is why people who have superior senses awaken. People who have the third eye awaken. People who have the power to enter within the astral universe, within the astral parallel dimension, they have the power also 
to see the past, to see the present, and to see the future. Because the future is the projection of the present, and the present is the projection from the past. You see, so time is relative, but when we awaken our consciousness, we'll be able to perceive reality in a more complete manner. So we have to stop sleeping 24 hours a day. We have to stop snoring and dreaming 24 hours a day. And we have to learn to awaken our consciousness, our soul consciousness, because we have lost our soul because we created the ego, the me, 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 out of fear. You see, instead of accepting that we are all important, not only me. So when I concentrate into understanding the psychology of everyone, when we concentrate in understanding that we are all here to help each other, to build a perfect society, to construct a real human society, there is a big difference than thinking and feeling me, 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 poor me, poor me, which is egotistic psychology that creates only enemies. And there is no small enemy. Remember my words. There is no small enemy. Any enemy can destroy us. So if we learn not to create enemies, we will have a better life. And we need to create a society where there are no enemies. There are only friends. There, are, there is an incredible brotherhood, an incredible fraternity. So the purpose of this lecture is to understand better the real meaning of astral projection. So it means that 24 hours a day, we don't live only within our physical body. We live also within the astral body and the other bodies. But today we're talking about the astral body, the emotional body, the molecular body that lives within this parallel universe called the fifth dimension, you see. And we all practice astral projection. It means that we travel within the universe, within the galaxy, and within our planet Earth with the astral body, the molecular body, which is ruled by different cosmic laws than the physical universe. Have you ever seen yourself flying in a dream? Well, I have, I, have, I have seen myself flying. And many, many other people who can, who can remember their dreams, they say, of course, you know, I have seen myself a million times flying. And is that an illusion? The answer is no, it is real. Because the astral body, the emotional body or molecular body is a very light body made only of molecules. It's not made of cells. Cells are too heavy, too heavy to fly, to levitate. But the astral body is a very light body. So, and to move faster, the astral body is capable of flying at an incredible speed within this parallel universe, connected with the past, the present, and the future of humanity, and also of each individual member of our humanity. And also, if we are talking about the galaxy, every member that lives within the galaxy. But again, we need to learn, we need to learn to be conscious, to awaken our consciousness, to create our soul, because we only have an embryo of a soul, because the ego has devoured, has eaten our soul, has replaced our soul. That makes us unconscious instead of being conscious. Now, how can we awaken our consciousness within the astral universe? For example, you know, people who have done it all the time, who can do it on purpose, people who are more awakened than common individuals, what they do all the time, they enter consciously into the astral dimension and they meet people who, who have died. It happened to me also. I have met people who died, members of my family, and I had a very interesting conversation with them. Was that, you know, another illusion? The answer is no, it wasn't an illusion. It was a reality. The only problem is because we have an ego, the ego 
doesn't allow us to see that reality in a complete manner. We see it in a fractional manner. And of course, it is also part of illusion. It is real, but it's a twisted reality that we perceive unless we learn to annihilate the ego by awakening our consciousness. And vice versa, learning to annihilate the ego, then consciousness, consciousness will be awakened. So it is more than possible to visit our relatives who pass away, who are still there, and having a nice conversation and even helping them from our side. How can we awaken? How can we awaken our consciousness? You know, it's very important that what we do to remember that when we are here in the physical world, we repeat, we have the tendency to repeat in the actual parallel universe what we do here. So if we do a lot of crazy situations like getting drunk, taking drugs, womanizing, if we are men, womanizing women, taking advantage of people, stealing, you know, acting like a criminal. In the actual, we are going to be also meeting other individuals who have also an actual body, and we, we are going to be also doing exactly there what we are doing here. So it's important that we change our way of thinking to act here in a better manner. So that way we'll be able to visit the astral in a different way because there is a superior astral and there is an inferior astral. The superior astral, we could say, is part of heaven, the nine heavens. And the inferior astral is what we call the infradimensions of nature or inferno. So it's up to us. But sometimes it's not so bad to visit the infradimensions because there we can see our own mistakes from past lives. You see, that's very, very important to remember that we've been here many, many times. I know that many religions, religious institutions don't accept this possibility that we've been here many, many times. Well, with all respect to them, we insist in telling them that we've been here around many, many times. Because if we had only one opportunity, it would be very unfair. Children that were born to die of starvation in a, in a poor country, if, if they had only that possibility and nothing else, it would be very unfair. And the divinity is extremely fair, just. There is cosmic justice. So when a child comes here to die of starvation in a few weeks, it's because that child in past lives, made a lot of mistakes and is paying now a very heavy karma. And when that child dies, will come back later to experience new lifetimes because the karma is already paid through the suffering that they experience themselves and also the suffering that they produce, they gave to their own relatives. So let's try to understand that, you know. The universe is much bigger than what we imagine. We are ruled by hundreds of cosmic laws and we are not even aware of them. You see, it's extremely important to learn to awaken our consciousness. And if we do it in the physical, we will be able to do it in the actual universe. So we recommend an exercise for us to be able to awaken our consciousness here so we can transfer that awakening process into the actual dimension while we are dreaming, while we are sleeping, when we practice our astral projection that normally is unconscious, but here we have to learn to do it consciously. So we recommend to learn to remember ourselves. What is that? What's the meaning of remembering ourselves? Well, in, in the lecture when we mentioned that we had seven bodies, remember that we said, I am not the physical body. I am not the aesthetic or the vital body. I am not the emotional or astral body or molecular body. I am not the mind. I am not the human soul. I am not the divine soul, but I am the spirit. Remember ourselves means that. See yourself the way we really are because we are spiritual beings. But we are not the bodies. 
we are we have those bodies as a vehicle to move within those different parallel universes, different parallel dimensions. So we have those bodies, we have them. They are vehicles, they are wardrobe of the spirit. But we are not, you see. The spirit is immortal, will never die because it were never born. It has always been, will always be. But the other bodies have a limit. They have a beginning, they have an end. All of them will die because they were born. But the spirit has no beginning, no end. So remembering ourselves means that exactly, exactly. And learning to be here and now. You know, instead of living in the past, many people live in the past. Oh, yeah. Suffering, remembering their pain, their suffering, their tragedies. You know, no consolation. They are depressed all the time. And they are making a big mistake because they are ignoring reality of the present time now. Here and now. If you are depressed, go into a park. Look at the trees. Observe them. Observe the birds flying around you. Listen to the sound of nature, to the beauty of nature. And enjoy that moment here and now, here and now, here and now. Because this is the only real reality that we have to learn to experience in our physical moment, in our physical life. Here and now, because the past is gone. You know, the past is gone, it's dead. And the future, maybe will never come. Maybe I will die in a minute from now. I will have a heart attack or a stroke. So there is no future. So what's the real reality for me here and now is exactly that. To learn to experience here and now and understand that I am an immortal spiritual being who has been here before and will continue being here until the time comes for all of us to return to the Absolute, which is the homeland of the Spirit. And that could happen at the end of planet Earth. When planet Earth dies, probably we will have to return to the Absolute, the homeland of the Spirit that can be described physically, because there is evidence about that, through the black holes within the galaxy. You know, through many telescopes today, we can see those black holes that they are inhaling and exhaling life from the Absolute into the universe and vice versa. So remembering ourselves in our physical world, if we do it every day, every day, every day, will help us to awaken our consciousness, to learn to enjoy life better, to learn to enjoy being here and now, discovering the beauty of being here and now. It could happen we are in the middle of a war. But do you remember who you are? That you are a, an immortal spiritual being. You won't be afraid of the war. You will experience an inner peace that normally we would never experience if we didn't have that capability to remember, remember in ourselves our real being. So this is why we wouldn't fall into fear, panic, because the horror of war is really too much for everyone to be, you know, tolerated. But if we learn to live here and now, if we learn to remember ourselves, we'll be able to escape from the horror of war and even to survive. With all respect, allow me to tell you that I had an experience like, like this. I was in the middle of a battlefield and I survived thanks that I was capable at that moment of remembering my real being and asked my real being for help and I survived. I was a civilian in the middle of the horror of war. I won't be able to talk about this today, but maybe in the future. So remembering our, ourselves will help us to do the same thing within the actual universe. So if you remember yourself, what if you question yourself with this kind of interrogation? Okay, where, are, where am I now? Am I here in the physical world or am I within a dream? Does it sound, you know, too much to be understood? 
Yeah, because it could be that I'm in the middle of a dream, you know. When I was talking to my physical father who passed away many years ago, I was convinced in the middle of my dream that it was real. It was so real, you know, the conversation with him. But he was already gone. But now, if I practice, at that time I wasn't practicing this exercise of remembering myself. But if I do it now, every day and every minute of my life, I would be able to repeat that experience in the actual while I am sleeping, while my physical body is sleeping on the bed. And my astral body is moving, traveling within our planet Earth, or even through the galaxy. If I practice this remembering myself, my question should be, what, I, what am I now? There is a, there is a codification, uh, there is a, a code, actually, that should be applied. We call it SOL, S-O-L, subject, object, and location. I am going to repeat it. Subject, object, and location. It means soul, soul, S-O-L. In Latin means sun. Subject is me, of course. And if I remember my real being, I'm, I'm an immortal spiritual being, but I have a natural body now and a physical body. So, and there are other individuals surrounding me. Okay, subject is many, many people, including myself. Object, what are we doing here? I also see furniture, we are inside of a home, a house, or I also see, you see, uh, streets through a window, cars passing by, but suddenly I see no cars, I see vehicles from the past. What is this, you know? <laughs> What's happening to me? Location, oh, what am I now? Am I in Toronto, Canada, or am I somewhere else? Suddenly, I can be in Europe at the moment because in a past life, I lived in Europe. And now I'm experiencing an astral projection, you know, situation, visiting my own past. So if I question myself, and then I, I, I question myself, but what is this, you know? How can I be in two different places at the same time? Yes, I am. In the astral projection, I'm visiting now my past, my past lives, and now I immerse within a European location where there are no cars the way we know them today. There are different kinds of transportation, in the, maybe in the middle, you know, in hundreds of hundreds of years ago, and and also the location, the type of furniture is totally different on the ones the modern kind of furniture that we use today. So then, if I am practicing this exercise, remembering myself and being here and now, I will be able to understand that this is not the physical world. So if I jump within, you know, that location where I am, if I float, of course, I'm not in the physical world. I'm in the actual. I'm in a parallel universe, in a parallel dimension. In the so-called world of dreams, universal dreams, and also the universe of the death people, because we continue alive after we die, and we come back to where we used to be before we were born. You see, and this is interesting. So, Maelon Veor, the founder of Gnostic anthropology and Gnostic cosmology, Gnostic psychology, he described an experience that something that happened to him in one of his books when he was a, a child. He had a lot of travel, astral projection experiences. And he teaches, you know, different ways to awaken our consciousness while we are practicing our astral projection. Because there is a difference between conscious astral projection and unconscious astral projection. All of us experience an unconscious astral projection. We don't even know that we are dreaming. You see, and then Samaelon Veor said that suddenly he was walking on the street and entered into a house. And in that house, there was a lady sit down be behind a desk. And she was very busy doing something, some kind of business books, you know, writing probably accounting, bookkeeping. And she didn't pay attention to him, you know. He was trying to talk to her, but she didn't really care about his presence there. 
So he was looking around, you know, and suddenly he saw a butterfly made of glass. But the butterfly made of glass started to move. And then he said, oh, this is impossible in the physical world. So I'm dreaming. And immediately he came back into his physical body. He woke up on his bed and he realized it was a natural experience. But it became a conscious natural experience because he realized what really happened. And in most of cases, most of people are not aware of situations like this. You know, I had the honor of meeting the Venerable Mr. Mistress Little Lantis, the wife of Samael Onveor. And this lady, an angel reincarnated, she had the power to be aware, conscious, within all parallel universes simultaneously, all seven dimensions of time and space. And this lady, by looking at you, she looked at me and she knew exactly what I was thinking. And before I started questioning her, she gave me the answer because she knew what I, would, what I was going to be questioning. That lady knew also by looking at me, knew my past, even my past lives. And also she projected into the future and she gave me, you know, a lot of indication about what should I do to improve my own life. So it was an incredible experience meeting that lady, an angel reincarnated with a feminine body, an incredible, incredible superior being. So I also have met some of my students, you know, when I teach Gnostic anthropology, some of my students tell me that they have the knowledge, they have the power to enter into astral projection and they see their physical bodies sleeping on their bed while they are flying inside the same room where the physical body is sleeping. Many of them can do it, you know. And, and this is a beautiful experience because in reality, not everybody can do that, you know. I have to confess that it took me a long time to learn to do things like this. And the reason is that when we become too intellectual and the ego is dominating our intellect, we are not capable of doing things like this. And the main reason is that we block that capability because we don't believe it's real. <laughs> we say, yeah, it's impossible. We have only one body, you know. What everybody believes in our own scientific community is trying to heal many illnesses, looking into the brain without understanding and knowing that we have more than a physical body. For example, cancer is a molecular illness that came from the molecular body, from the actual body. And that molecular virus called cancer get, got out of the actual body, the molecular body, and entered into the physical body because of our own ignorance, because of our own mistakes, because we ignore cosmic law. And instead of respecting and living in accordance with cosmic law, we are doing the opposite. And this is why, this is the karma. Cancer is a karma. Every illness is a karma. It's a karmic situation. The law of cause and effect. You see the point? So if our scientists knew better, our doctors in medicine, our psychiatrists knew better that the brain is not the mind, we would be in a total different situation. We would be able to heal more and more our illnesses because not all of them are coming from the physical body. A mental illness is coming from the mental body, which is an atomic body. And there are probably the same way there are molecular viruses like cancer, there must be atomic viruses also. So we can have a mental body or a mind ill that has nothing to do with the brain, you see. And this is important to be comprehended. Uh, we know we are still in diapers regarding medicine, even we believe we are not. But with all respect, we have to expose this situation because our duty, our mission, is to share what we have learned from Gnostic anthropology, Gnostic cosmology, Gnostic psychology, and even Gnostic medicine. So we have to also understand something else, you know, People, there are people who have the capability to see the astral, you know. There are many, many 
uh, people with superior senses, you know. For example, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, a lady who was one of the founders of the Theosophical Society. This lady had superior senses very much awakened. She could enter into the astral consciously. She had the power to see angels. And she could talk to angels face to face. And those angels crystallized, materialized, and they started to talk to her and having an incredible kind of dialogue. She wrote the book called The Secret Doctrine. This book can be read today in more than 20 languages. Well, this lady described that experience of writing that book as a perfect communication with those superior beings. They were actually higher than angels because they were, you know, we could call them archangels, and they dictated her that book, The Secret Doctrine. So this lady had the power to enter into the astral universe and to see the past, the present, and the future. And of course, as a psychic, she was born with those capabilities. And that lady, before she died, she ascended into a higher level of consciousness. She reached masterhood. It means that this lady is not a common person anymore. And apparently, she must have come back already with a different physical body, but now it's a masculine body. According to our studies in Gnostic Anthropology, and according to what Samael Veor, the founder of Gnostic Anthropology, has described. Now, you know, it's important to also go into something called the Law of Attraction. Remember, there, are, there is a book called The Law of Attraction. There are videos, DVDs made about it, and it, it produced a tremendous international impact because the people were told, you know, whatever you ask from the universe will come to you because we have the power to attract. Our thoughts, our emotions are a way to attract. You know, if you are poor and you want to stop being poor, you just ask the universe. And if you have no doubt, if you have no fear, it will happen. Well, you know, we have to clarify that because it looks very attractive, very interesting, very powerful, and also very possible. And it is possible, but our duty as Gnostic anthropologists is to alert people that, you know, don't make the mistake that most of people make. Because most of people don't care about the ego. According to the law of attraction, I have already, let's say, $10 million, and, and I would love to get $100 million. And suddenly, I concentrate to get the $100 million, and many opportunities appear in my life. But then, the only way to get there is to step on the head of hundreds of people, even to step on the law, to avoid paying taxes, to get involved into dirty business, criminal activities, and, well, you know, I'm decided, determined to make my $100 million, and after 10 years, I will get there. But I don't realize that by using the law of attraction, I committed a lot of crimes against other cosmic laws. I stepped on the law because of my ego. I didn't care about annihilating my ego. I didn't ask divine forces to help me. I was asking negative forces of the universe, dark forces of the universe. So the law of attraction function, yes, but now I increase my karma. And part of it was working in the actual universe. You know, there are a lot of people who practice black magic. Black magic, black magician, they invoke demons because demons are real the way angels are real. Demons are also real. And, of course, some people who practice black magic, they have the power also to enter into the astral universe and to do some kind of evil rituals. To also generate, based on the law of attraction, generate a lot of benefits by using this kind of knowledge. Well, our duty is to share this information because the law of attraction didn't express this reality. The so-called the secret is not the real 
complete secret, our mission, our duty is to clarify that there are many other secrets, but we, the Gnostics and the Gnostic anthropologists, are sharing this knowledge in a very clear manner, in a more complete manner, because we don't want people to fall into the trap of the ego, because the ego is alive. The ego is unconsciousness, is evil, is our own perversities camouflaged, is our seven deadly sins. And we have to annihilate those seven deadly sins if we want to awaken our consciousness. So this is also part of it. If we can learn to practice astral projection, why don't we ask God, our inner God, to take us to a temple in heaven? to take us to a temple in the superior dimension of the astral, in the superior part of the astral dimension. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And we can sit down at the feet of a true master of the White Lodge. We can even visit the divine master Jesus Christ, King of Kings. We can meet superior beings. We can talk to them. We can learn from them. You know, the trouble is when we practice astral projection unconsciously, without knowing it, we can be pushed into go into meeting evil individuals on the other side that are going to twist our possibilities of ascension. This is extremely important. So astral projection is not just doing it the way many other schools of esoteric sciences can tell us. It's more than that. It's much more than that. Do we really care about working for the White Lodge? Or we don't really care and we don't even accept the reality of the Black Lodge? You know, there are many schools today of esoteric studies who say there is no good, no evil. With all respect, we are telling them they're wrong. Dead wrong. Because they will have to pay. They are increasing their karma. They are teaching, you know, a superior knowledge in a twisted manner. They are promoting evil instead of helping humanity to ascend. A lot of people, Jim, uh, have dreams. And I've noticed that in my earlier part of my life, my dreams were in black and white. And as I begin to find out about Gnosis and do some of these things and learn more and more, my dreams became more in color and more uh, expanded. And I began to learn more and more. So I, I think there's a lot of people out there that don't really believe the dream world is even has any reality, right? Or any validity. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. Yeah, even psychiatrists and psychologists, you know, they they give a total different explanation about what really happens, you know. Normally, they speak about illusions based on problems that we carry within, you know, the physical world. So, they don't pay, they don't accept that we can have a premonition, for example, in, in a dream. We can anticipate the future in a dream because in our own a actual experience, we enter into our own future and we saw a tragedy that was going to happen. And after after we, we know what's going to happen and we are convinced that this is going to happen, can we change that tragedy, potential tragedy? Of course we can. Of course we can. Because the future can be changed. What we cannot change is the past because it's already gone. And there are many movies about science fiction, you know, that say... I go into the past, you know, to save the world, and they try to change the past, but that, that's impossible, that's ridiculous. It cannot be done. But we can only change the present, and we can change the future. I'm supposed to die tomorrow, and I see myself dying in a dream. If I do something right today that will help me to pay my karma through the law of cause and effect, creating a good cause, I can change my negative potential situation for tomorrow and maybe I won't die. You see, and this is interesting to, to, to be able to know. So astral projection should be always used in a positive manner to improve ourselves, to ascend into higher levels of consciousness, higher levels of intelligence. 
You know, when people speak about, you know, the guardian angel, the guardian angel is also our own spirit, our own real being. It's a manifestation, a different kind of manifestation of our own real being, because our real being is the trinity of religion, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but it's also connected with our Divine Mother, the feminine aspect of God. It's also connected with the guardian angel. So it means that we have the potential to become angels ourselves. You see, so this is important. So the astral projection is something more serious than what people believe. Is, is it true that uh, Samuel Allen Ver says that we have 97% ego and 3% consciousness? It sounds weird when you say that 97% of the ego has eaten the consciousness. But I guess if you have even more ego, like 98, 99% ego, it would be almost impossible to go out consciously in the astral. Would that, is that true? Well, basically, you know, there are many people who, who are awakened, are awakened within evil to commit more evil. And it's like awakening, uh, you know, we, remember we were talking about that individual who killed 77 civilians in Europe recently. Wasn't in Denmark? Yeah, for our listeners, that was in the news just recently. And Yeah, well, that young man, you know, 33 <clears throat> years old, yeah. he is a typical case of a person who has lost his consciousness probably 100%. It means his 100% ego. There is no soul there anymore. The ego is the same apocalyptic beast of the Bible. And the apocalyptic beast represents the ego, the collective ego of the entire human race. But it's the same beast, you know, that we all carry within ourselves. And that ego is a monster that we created in different lifetimes. And now it's so powerful that it has eaten our 97% of our soul. So we are only 3% conscious, 97% subconscious, unconscious, infraconscious. If we work on the seven deadly sins, if we transform the seven deadly sins into the seven virtues, if we are very angry most of the time, if we can learn to re rule, regulate, and slowly, slowly learning to annihilate those demons of anger, we'll be able to awaken the opposite of anger, which is serenity and patience. Yeah, it's not enough just to control anger. You have to actually annihilate it, That's which correct. is a big difference. And, and this is the problem, you know, today our medical community, they teach about, you know, anger management, stress management. We, we say that's only one step, but it's more than that, you know, anger management and stress management at the beginning, but eventually the objective should be annihilation, total annihilation. And the trouble is they don't, they don't lead us into that possibility. At the contrary, they say it is too much asking, you know, that we should learn to annihilate the ego when that's impossible. They say we need the ego to survive. With all respect, we tell them no. We don't need the ego to survive. At the contrary, the ego is the cause of all kinds of human tragedies. It's the enemy number one of the entire human race. It's the same Satan of all religions. This is why our humanity is upside down today. We, we enter into a collective bankruptcy. The all systems, all economic system and political system are in bankruptcy today. Isn't this whole thing about dreams doesn't it all boil down to this, that the average person is, is afraid of their own shadow and to ask them to go into the dream world and actually take a close look at who they are and what they are and look at the egos, that's immediately very terrifying for weak people, isn't it? That's correct. It's totally correct. You know, the trouble is, you know, there are many pseudo-esoteric groups that invoke the ego and they are convinced that the ego is okay. We tell them they don't know what they are doing to themselves and to the world. They will have to pay a very heavy karma because the world is upside down because of the collective ego, which is going, which is, which has become stronger and stronger every day. 
Well, uh, dealing with the ego is not easy. I mean, it's a very difficult thing. That's why the Bhagavad Gita has um, this great battle going on. And that's why the Bible itself has this great battle going on. It is David yeah. and Goliath. It is the soul fighting against the negative things, uh, monsters that we have created lifetime after lifetime. If, if you take a look at, at the psychology of, of a killer, okay, I, I don't want to do that necessarily. It's a terrible place to want to visit. But if you get inside their heads and you find out that at the various early times they've had thoughts about wanting to kill people, well, where does that come from? That comes from a previous life. In a previous life, they've probably killed someone. So they created this ego. And now in this lifetime, they find themselves wanting to do that. Right. You know, that's totally correct, you know. If we remember this young man, 33 years old, who committed that horrible crime of killing 77 people and he has no remorse, even when he entered into the tribunal, he made the, the Hitler salutation, you know. Totally convinced that he is correct. He even called himself, you know, a, a leader. He con he called himself, you know, the, the, the commander, the... The, the big chief of a military operation and he expects followers, many, many followers who will do continue doing what he started doing in his own country, which had been considered a very peaceful country, very democratic country, and also very civilized country. And this man, you know, shows that there are mistakes, you know, within a society, within, within all societies on earth, because monsters like that are coming from the past. You know, in 33 years of age, that's not enough to create a monster like that. If they're at war with the world, okay, and in whatever way whatsoever, they, they have a crusade or a mission to go and prove something to, to, to the world, to kill people or to solve some kind of a problem, they don't realize that the real problem is inside. Right? That the egos are, are uh, making it appear as though the problems are in the actual physical world. But if we annihilate those egos, we, we meditate on them and annihilate them, the, re the physical world mysteriously and magically changes. That's correct. You know? Yes. So we yes. defeat our egos inside, we defeat our enemy inside, and we don't have to do anything in the physical world. These people that go around trying to crusade, they're making a big mistake. You know? That's correct. That's totally correct. Yes. Yes. This is why we need to practice a tremendous psychological revolution. Because evolution is not enough. You know, and the trouble is there are many people who are evolutionists. They are totally convinced that through evolution, we are all going to become supermen, superwomen, which is wrong. With all respect, it is wrong. Because evolution is a mechanical law. We, we had a lecture about that. We recommend to listen to that lecture. Evolution, involution, revolution. You know, evolution is a mechanical cosmic law. Involution is the opposite. Evolution is an ascension, part of the will of time. Involution is the other 50% of the will, a dissension, so there is no way that through evolution we are going to ascend and to stay there in, in an ascended position because what goes up will go down. The only way, you know, to go higher is to get out of the wheel of evolution, involution, devolution, and to ascend in, according to the law of sacrifice. The law of sacrifice means I have to annihilate my ego, I have to transform myself, I have to ascend from the animal kingdom into the real human being's kingdom by developing a human psychology instead of the actual animal psychology dominated by the ego. But there are things in nature too that teach us that um, amorphosis, okay, a change in anything, like a worm can change into a butterfly, there's there are more examples than that, but there are lots of things in nature that show basically that that things can transform into something beautiful, and this is uh, the the morphosis that we're talking about. The change is the the phoenix bird arising from the ashes, right? It's the same yeah. thing. Yes. No. Basically, you know, evolution, we could say, is a cosmic law, and it, it is true that 
you know, there is a mineral kingdom, there is a, a vegetal kingdom, there is an animal kingdom, and spirits, individual spiritual beings, have been experiencing a journey, going, you know, from the mineral kingdom into the vegetal kingdom, and eventually into the animal kingdom. And that law of evolution gets into who we are today, but this is it. We cannot continue evolving after where we are, because this is the limit for evolution. After that, there is a devolution, involution, returning to the original point. So what we need now, if we really want to ascend into a higher level of being, we need a psychological revolution. As you said, it, if we can change the way of thinking, we can change the world. We can improve human life on earth because the ego is not, is not needed at all. The ego is an expression of failure, collective failure of our entire human race. The vast majority of professionals out there that deal with uh, psychology and counseling and things like that, they believe the ego is absolutely required, don't they? Yes, yes, they do. But I, I got the feeling that now, I remember 30 years ago when I started, you know, <laughs> walking this path, Gnostic anthropology, Gnostic cosmology, Gnostic psychology, nobody accepted that we had a soul. You know, the mind was the highest of the highest. Almost nobody. Very few people did agree that we needed a soul. Even the meaning of psychology according to our Western world, is a study of the mind. But the real meaning, you know, this is a Greek word, psychology. Psychology means, you know, psyche is, is soul. Logos is a study. It's a study of the soul. So in our, you know, Western world, we, we twisted the real meaning of psychology. And this is the problem, that when we ignore the reality of the soul, and the soul is the bridge between God and the mind and the body, and God is our own spiritual being. So if we don't have a soul, how are we going to connect with God, with cosmic intelligence, cosmic consciousness, cosmic love, cosmic wisdom? How are we going to connect? It's impossible. And this is the trouble. We created the ego, and the ego is the big block with God. This is why people became what? People became atheists because they blocked their capability to communicate with the true intelligence. And also, religious fanatic individuals committed the same mistake. They also disconnected from God. And they pretend to be followers of a specific religion and a specific religious doctrine. But in reality, when you are a fanatic, you do extreme, extreme things. Probably this criminal who killed 77 people in Europe, you know, maybe he's convinced that he's a religious man, that God told him to do that. You see, and this is religious fan fanatics individual. There are people who jump into a war, religious wars through human history, because in reality, that's not real religion. This is an abuse. This is a disconnection from God because of the ego. You see, we had a lecture about that when we spoke about the three minds. In the, so we recommend that you listen to that lecture. Um, Non-religious people tend to ask this question, well, show me a miracle. And what comes to mind is the um, human heart cells in a Petri dish, if you look at them under a microscope, Okay, the, if you look at each individual heart cell from a human being under the microscope, it pulsates. And if you have many of them in the Petri dish and you look at each one, they're all pulsing at a different rate, they, they, like the, the contractions, right? If you take uh, some sharp objects and, and push all of these cells together so they touch one another, all of a sudden now every cell begins to pulsate at exactly the same rate as if it's one. And if you think about it, okay, what you can find under the microscope, if you look at human blood, live blood, like dark field microscopy or something like that, and you look at blood actually not, not killed, this is live blood that, that's still actually alive, 
You can see white blood cells going around finding foreign objects and closing in upon it, and the white blood cell will actually commit suicide to save your life. What's going on with the red blood cells? They're, they, they, um, if you become tense, the red blood cells contort and distort. And then when you, when you become re relaxed, you can see the red blood cells going back to their normal shape. Just looking under the microscope, you can see actual miracles taking place. The human body is absolutely amazing. You told me one time, Jim, that uh, if an atheist doesn't believe in God, we'll stop breathing, right? Because isn't the, uh, the very act of being able to breathe with human lungs, they haven't been able to re replicate that in a laboratory. They, don't, they can't do that. So it, it is a miracle. Your heart beating, your lungs breathing, these are all absolute miracles, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. You're right. Yes. Yes. And so what does the atheist do when he says there is no God and yet there's proof all around and yet, when he goes to sleep and wakes up, he pays no attention to his dreams whatsoever, right? Yeah, essentially, you know, um, an atheist only believe, they believe that there is no uh, reality for the divinity. They cannot prove it themselves. So, and the other, the other, you know, extreme, when people are religious fanatics, they also believe, you know, that God is telling them to do this and that. But according to Gnostic psychology, Gnostic anthropology, Gnostic philosophy, Gnostic cosmology, we say we need to know. We need to know ourselves. We need to know God. We need to know the universe. Because knowledge is power. Everybody is saying that today. Knowledge is power. So we need to fall in love with knowledge. When we fall in love with knowledge the way we used to be, remember children, children, we were children, you know, once, and we were bombarding our elders with questions. We wanted to know everything. We were in love with knowledge. What happened? If we continue doing that, we became leaders. Because when you are a leader, you fall in love with knowledge plus knowledge plus knowledge which is equal to what? To excellence. That made you a leader because you are in love with excellence, which is knowledge plus knowledge plus knowledge. You continue learning, even if this is the last minute of your life. But most of people become followers because they never continue developing the potential leader that was awakening when they were bombarding their parents or their elder with questions. You see? So this is why we have to learn to know God. We have to learn to know the universe. We have to learn to know ourselves. What do we know? Almost nothing, because we fell in love with mediocrity, which is limited knowledge, the opposite of excellence. We became ignorance, and we are proud of being ignorance. Ignorance and arrogance, and of course, you know, we develop the ego, and the ego is what? Isn't it chronic stupidity? With all respect, this is what it is. Chronic stupidity is the opposite of intelligence. And this is the tragedy of, you know, people who only believe that believing is the way out instead of learning to know. You see? Well, we're, the world and the universe is a much bigger place than we realize. And uh, once, actually, that's what Gnosis really is all about, isn't it? It's yeah. learning that, that the our existence isn't just um, what we think in the physical world. It's, we're like a little speck of sand on the beach, right? And uh, if you zoom out, you see the rest of it. Not only in the physical world, but in other dimensions as well, right? Of course, mm -hmm. of course, yes. There is no limit for knowledge. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, my host today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here. Thanks to our listeners for being with us. Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name's Richard Rucroft. You've been listening to Gnostic Lectures, a continuing series of lectures. This has been number 24, The World of Dreams, subtitle Astral Projection. 